Every year, more than one billion tons of unspoiled food is thrown into the trash. This is a staggering figure. But here in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, there is a place where this food, which to us is garbage, is recooked and becomes the staple food of thousands of people. I'm talking about Pag Pag. When we got here, to us, it looked like the worst job to have was scrounging around for discarded spoiled food. And then there are the people who reach inside the sewer to try and collect what is left over, the scraps of other people's leftovers. It's 5.30 in the morning, but now it's time for Pag Pag because they eat it for breakfast. I wash it. Chicken, soy sauce, MGS, Sprite. Yummy. Delicious and inexpensive. My name is Giuseppe and I have a mission to travel the world, to meet the most extraordinary people on the planet and to ask them a simple question. What does happiness mean to you? Welcome to Project Happiness. So what exactly is Pag Pag? Well, it's the traditional dish of Tondo, which is the largest slum in Manila. Everyone here goes crazy for it, but I'm sure that none of you have ever tried it. And do you know why? Well, because it's garbage. That's right. It's basically the leftover fried chicken from fast food chains, which people have thrown away. The food is collected from the garbage and it's then rinsed and cooked once more. I know it's hard to believe, but here in the slums of Manila, this is everyone's favorite dish because it's cheap and apparently it tastes great. Today our mission will be to follow the trucks that collect garbage bags to find out where they end up and to hear the resilient stories of those who survive day to day feeding off the scraps of the more fortunate. Everything appears to be tranquil here, but actually they are all telling us to be very careful especially in the dark alleys, because so many people here are addicted to shabu. Let's move away a bit because they're working here. They are addicted to shabu, a drug that is very popular here in Asia and especially the Philippines. And it's made by mixing meth and caffeine. It's, it keeps people awake, but very aggressive. And there have also been cases where these people stab other people with the same syringes they use to get high. So it is very dangerous. Situations can get out of hand at a moment's notice, but everything is under control now. Everyone is very nice, but we always have to keep our eyes peeled and be very careful. I don't think it's a huge surprise that the slum is fully infested with rats and cockroaches. They're everywhere, eating the remains of the garbage that the pickers bring here. Once you're inside Tondo, it is not at all difficult to find the trash collectors. They're literally in every corner. The first trucks are arriving in the slum. Over there is Ryan, whom we just met. And he's sorting these bags of miscellaneous trash. There's a bit of everything. He explains that there's some plastic, some cans, but there is also food in there. So Ryan's job right now is to separate the food from all the other trash in these bags and then that food will become the pack patch. So now we're getting a look at how they do it. They search with bare hands without problem and they are looking for any food remnants. Is this one good? Pad pad? Can I see? Okay. This is an example. Uh, this piece of chicken will become Pag Pag, and it's simply a piece of fast food that someone in the city ate, and then threw out the rest. I don't think I will ever look at my leftovers the same way again. Ryan, is it not hard to put your hands into the garbage? Sometimes it is exhausting, other times it is almost fun. Especially when you find some money in the trash. There is no other job that pays enough for me to cover. My family's expenses.
Questo qui. This one here, which is actually new, he won't eat it because it's gone bad. It had an air bubble inside, the packet was swollen, and so they gave it to the pigs. As I said, they have to be careful as well as to what they choose to eat, because sometimes the wrong choice can be deadly. Wow, look at that. It, it's full, full of food. Oh, this is good too. Good. Good. No. These are other pieces that are added to the pack pack. It all gets mixed together. Just put it here. Yes. This is an exceptional garbage bag because it is full of new food, which as we said will be expired, but... Yeah? Ah, 11. Yes, Samir. Okay. It's good to eat. That is good? Yes. Dumplings. Still good enough to eat. It's been a long time since I've been at a loss for words to describe something that I've seen in my travels, but this is one of those moments. It is complex. It is complex recounting to you what we're seeing, the conditions under which these guys are working. The pungent smell and injustice that that's in front of us. And I'm almost ashamed to ask him if it doesn't gross him out to put his hands inside these piles of garbage in this rotten food that he is touching right now. I don't think it matters much when your one and only goal is to survive. In some you give it to the kids. Yes. In, in absence of abundance, there is also always room for generosity. He's finding snacks and giving them to the children. Actually, he could even sell them, but he's giving them to all the children. Because in a community like this one, they all have needs. So if you can help each other, you do it. And we're seeing right here in front of our eyes. How much can you sell this food? Per bucket. Per Jollibee bucket? Yeah. Okay. They sell it by the bucket, about the size of a Jollibee basket filling it with all of this. So not just with leftover chicken, but with all the good food they find, they sell it for 100 pesos, which amounts to almost, almost two dollars. Is there anything in the garbage that you feel disgusted to touch or everything is fine? So, I know, broken glass. Broken glass. Yeah. Have you ever found maybe money, gold, Rings. Money. Money? You found money? Yes. Like how much? $203. $203? Wow. <laughs> good? Really good? Yes. No bad. No bad. Very good. <laughs> what is no, this? So very good. Is it jelly bee? Yes. Can you know if it's KFC, Jelly Bean? You, can you understand? Yes. Have you ever felt sick eating this from the garbage? No. Healthy. <laughs> Healthy. Healthy. Very good. No sucky. This stuff doesn't make me sick because I'm tough. <laughs> Do you ever think that this food was the waste of someone else? You know, maybe it was in the mouth of someone else and you are eating the rest. For me, there is no problem. I'm going to eat it. I'm not picky, and besides, I'm always hungry. You want some? You want some? You want some? Actually, we don't eat it like that. We recook it and then we eat it. We cook it in boiling water. Have you ever eaten directly from... Uh, Jelly bee, for instance, like a real new meal from jelly bee. No, no, always from the garbage. Always from the garbage. Yes, I've only ever eaten it from the garbage. Are you ready? <laughs> Dinner time. Would you like some? When the sun goes down, the slum becomes a real open air landfill, where entire families sift through trash piles non stop until sunrise. It is continuous. All night long they scavenge, they sort. There are no working hours here. 
These young boys and girls spend the whole night sorting through all of this garbage. Filling this bag requires about 30 kilos of recycled plastic. Do you know how much they sell it for? Two dollars. In these situations, there's always the poorest of the poor, there's someone who has the worst of the worst jobs. When we got here, it looked like the worst job to have was scrounging around for discarded, spoiled food. There's someone who collects the plastic, divides it, and then there are the people who reach inside the sewer to try and collect what is left, the scraps of other people's leftovers. I peel off the labels from mineral water bottles, then we will sell them by the kilo in the morning. This is our livelihood. Every day we do this. Life is hard. We don't have other jobs, only this one. We have no choice. If this is the only work around, we simply have to endure. This is our daily sustenance, you know. My children go to school. They are my family. All of them are my family. There are four of us. Life is hard here. We cannot afford not to work every day. Otherwise, we would have nothing to eat during the day. And plus, my family needs it for my children's school tuition so they can study. It all comes from this. But in the end, even here, we manage to find happiness. If you can scrape together two bucks, you have an honest job. You can make your family happy. You have something to feed them every day. And you don't have to try every day to survive. Without any of these certainties, your life is a sad one. You know why? Hunger. I assure you that an empty stomach hurts if you don't have a job. And any work, even one like this, we endure and we appreciate because it allows us to live with dignity and allows me to pay for my daughter's schooling and for my family, along with my wife's work. Toti's gaze is reminiscent of someone who has not been hardened by the trials of life. And even in adversity, he manages every day to find a reason, albeit a small one, to be happy. His story particularly resonates with me, which is why I gladly accept the invitation to have tea at his house at the end of his shift. Hi, what's the guy? Hey. Hi. Hi. Toti! Ah, he there he is. Oh. I found him. You come. Hi. Can I? Come. Hi. Oh, good. Sit down. Oh, he also has a dog. Hello. Where do you sleep? Upstairs. Can I see? Yes. Oh. I have to be careful. Already bumped. Ah, they are sleeping. Ah, no, no, okay, okay. Okay. I didn't want to disturb. But you, how many kids do you have? There, there's another one. So you have. He is not my son. I know your kids. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay, get pressure. All okay. right. I didn't want to bother them. They are too kind. But this. What's that? This is a. This is a typical traditional house here. Tiny. It's absolutely tiny. Okay. And you. Eat there. Yeah. You eat there. You cook there. Yes. Oh, it's it's a it's a nice house. How many people? How many people live here? Ah, uh, six. Six. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have been living in this house since 2004. It is a simple life. It is what it is. Uh, did you build this house, or you already? No. Okay. My own house. All hands. Yeah. But you built it? No. You bought it? Yeah. How much a, a house like this one can cost? Two thousand. Two thousand? Yeah. Two thousand is 30 euros. Is yeah. impossible. Is it comfortable? Well, yeah, I'm comfortable. Well, yes. <laughs> no, I don't. There's no bathroom. But you can go to the common one outside. Do you ever desire? a house like the one in the city. This house here is fine. We're more comfortable here because it's close to work.
So as it's 5.30 in the morning and I'm this close to joining these guys and sleeping in the middle of the road. But now it's time for Pag Pag because they eat it for breakfast. Asking around though, I discover that it's still too early. So I take the opportunity to discover Tondo by day. We are about to enter a traditional house. Meanwhile, these boys are showering. Hey, what's up? Everyone here is very welcoming. They gave us permission to go up and have a look around. This is how they live in Tondo. <laughs> the most affluent in Tondo live right here inside this structure, a former port warehouse where each family has somehow managed to create a decent home for themselves with what they have found among the trash. Never in my travels had I seen a cluster of houses, of shacks quite like this. They are piled on top of each other, and you get the feeling that they could fall at any moment. In addition to that, you have to be careful of everything, because there are spikes, cables, wires that can hurt you. Although the children seem quite at ease, as they always are, even in the streets. Let's go in and see what it's like. This is the most curious thing of all. Basically, this here is a Wi-Fi center, but it is coin-operated. So people come here to connect to the internet and pay one peso for six minutes of internet connection. There are some people who are on social media, on Facebook. Now I see that they are using the internet with tokens. It is extraordinary. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. That's the signal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay for me. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, oh, with a pito. One peso. Oh, no, no, and three. Oh, wait down. Okay, 29 or two, can I take in? Three minutes. Okay. Three pesos, huh? We have found that the internet here works by coin operation, and I don't think there is an angel looking out for them as they surf the internet. For us, though, the solution is very simple and very cheap. NordVPN. If you aren't already using a VPN while watching this video, well, your IP address, browsing history, location, and other sensitive personal data is visible in the best case scenario to advertisers, but unfortunately also to cyber criminals. But what NordVPN does is secure your internet connection and make it essentially invisible, hiding your IP address and thus all your personal information from malicious attackers. Oh, and here's a bit of impartial advice. Don't trust those free VPNs you find online because in order to be free, they make money through the sale of your personal information to advertising companies who buy your data to find out more about your shopping habits so as to make their advertisements more effective on you. Plus, with the link in the description, you need only one subscription in order to protect the navigation of your whole family because you can protect an unlimited number of devices by using NordVPN with your Wi-Fi router. Or you can choose to protect up to six devices at the same time with NordVPN's apps. And as always, I'll leave you the link in the description to find the best offer on the market right now to try NordVPN and finally surf the internet in total security. But now sit tight because I'm going to tell you a truly incredible story. What this child is doing, however, is truly impactful because he is not just collecting the plastic, separating it from the label. He's also collecting the water that was left inside these bottles, which will probably be used for drinking, cooking or bathing. So really, every little bit is important. Everything that we normally throw away has a new life here. If I would ask you what's happiness for you, what would you answer to me? For me, it is being able to help my parents and family. But what would really make me happiest is to become a policeman, so I can catch thieves. Are you happy that your, your son is helping you? Yes. Yes, because I know he cares about it. Do you think a person can be happy in Tondo? Here in Tondo, people take it for granted that their lives cannot change. But unless they do something to change it, nothing will ever happen. It's up to them to improve their lives. In the Tondo community, there is no doubt, Pag Pag is the best-selling street food. Everyone eats it because it costs pennies, it's tasty and it fills your stomach. But among all the vendors, there is one lady in particular who has earned herself the name of Pag Pag Queen. 
Because hers is the best of all. She agreed to show us her secret Pag Pag recipe that has made her so famous here. Now I pour it. Jollibee and McDonald's mixed. Mix. It's a little bit dirty. Yeah. Like there are pieces it was of... Uh, Lilini Cinco first, Lilini's. First, I will wash it. Everything is washed. After that, we will wash it once more. How many times? Three. Three. That's low. So the process of making Pag Pag is, first of all, three washes with hot water so that Evelyn can remove all the parts, the plastic, the paper, the garbage that remains stuck to food. She does this three times, now dumps the water. You can still see the bite, marks of the people who, who bought this chicken to eat it. Wow. Right. There's, a, there's a piece of uh, hamburger. Patty. This is uh, more expensive. Uh, more? More. Finding a whole piece of hamburger is definitely a delicacy. You see, in this, in this rinse bowl, there's a whole hamburger, but that will be mixed with everything else, so you'll see it's all random. If you're lucky, you'll even get a beef burger. The second step is frying the chicken that's just been washed. So yeah. Soy sauce. Okay. What is that? Bacon. MSG. Ah, MSG. Glutamate to give it a much stronger flavor and cover all those flavors that aren't so pleasant from being in the garbage. Maybe not the healthiest, but I think that's the least of our worries in this recipe. Sprite. Sprite. Why, why Sprite? When there is good. To enhance the flavors. Oh. Yummy. Yummy. So, chicken, soy sauce, MGS, Sprite. Sprite. Yummy. Folks at home, write this down. This is a fantastic recipe for using yesterday's leftover chicken. Yummy. I used to sell typical Filipino food like adobo. But then I realized that my customers could not afford to buy real food. And so one day they said to me, Evelyn, why don't you try cooking pag pag? That really is our favorite dish. And so I tried it. And then I became famous. And now they're raving about my pag pag. And if I'm not here, they come looking for me and say, it's time to cook, and I get to working at the stove. Everyone likes it because it's clean. Clean and delicious and tasty. Evelyn, could share with us your secret to be happy? My secret to being happy? Simply cooking, I just keep cooking for others. When I am here, I can't help but smile. I just keep smiling. People say I have an easy smile. I guess I'm very cheerful while cooking. My feeling. Because I do this for my Filipino brothers and sisters. Because this is what they can afford. It is within their budget. And basically, it is the Filipino's favorite dish. Delicious and inexpensive for a family of five you only need 50 pesos to make sure everybody is fed a price like this allows one to feed himself because people here are very impoverished and this is what they can afford to eat cooking makes me happy and gives me the opportunity to help those who have little. I'm always smiling. Even when there are problems, I smile. 
Smile so you don't grow old. Is it good? Good. <laughs> nice. Mm. Yummy. Yummy. Yeah. Uh, I'm full. Full. I've tasted a lot of stuff in my life, but I think I, I had better skip this one, guys. It is not very safe, actually. Maybe their stomachs are nice and strong, but it is not so safe. But I'm really glad that Evelyn here can make so many people happy with her, her pack pack. But I'm not risking it this time. Yummy. Yummy. It's a wrap. The best. <laughs> Evelyn's infectious energy and smile almost make me forget that I'm in one of the poorest places on the planet. But if there is one good thing that can come from Pag Pag, it's to remind us. To remind us every time that we eat, because the abundance we have is an immense privilege. According to United Nations data, more than 820 million people worldwide suffer from chronic hunger. And in the Philippines, for example, the statistics are terrible. 30% of children under five suffer from malnutrition. But even so, the stories of Evelyn, Ryan, Toti, Toti's family, and of all the people that I met in Tondo reminded me that happiness can flourish even in the most unthinkable places, from the smallest everyday joys. And perhaps in this simplicity lies a universal truth, that happiness is not defined by one's external circumstances, but from the human spirit that finds the strength to smile despite adversity. 